Well, I don't think it should come up as a surprise to anyone that we have a case of Ebola uh, since given the size of the epidemic, given the fact that it has a 21-day incubation period, given the fact that it's very easy for somebody to get on a plane and be anywhere in the world in less than 24 hours, it should be come as a surprise to no one that eventually a case would uh, walk into our borders and get sick some days after arrival, and that's exactly what happened in Texas. Well, let me answer that in two ways. I think the first question is, in this day and age, there are no health problems anywhere in the world that are not our problems. And we need to start dealing with those problems aggressively on a worldwide basis. This is the message I think our president was recently giving. This is the message that all of us need to receive. We need to deal with this problem now. This problem will only get worse. The message for people in the United States is, this is not a time to panic. This is not a time for hysteria. This is not a time for misinformation. This is a time to recognize that we need to identify potential cases. We have protocols to handle them. And if we follow those protocols, there is no major public health danger to our country yet. There will still be individuals that obviously need treatment from Ebola. We need to find them, identify them, and get them that proper treatment. Well, I think we should take an in-between position. Because of the very high case fatality rate in Africa, this is running a little over 50% of the people who are infected with this virus die, there is no discounting how scary a virus with that high a mortality rate is. Now having said that, although it has a high fatality rate, it is not as infectious as many other infectious diseases and that's advantageous and allows us to have more confidence that we can prevent the spread of that virus in a country that has as sophisticated a healthcare system as we have in this country. So I think I take an in-between position. This is clearly something that we need to deal with. We probably should have de dealt with it more aggressively, why uh, this particular health problem was isolated in Africa. If we don't put all our resources now into uh, getting it under control now, it will, the situation will only get worse. On the other hand, we in this country actually are in a far better position to deal with these isolated cases of Ebola than countries in West Africa. Well, here's the good news. Uh, this is not as contagious as virus as people might think based on uh, movies about terrible illnesses in, in international arenas. This is a uh, virus that is not transmitted basically by aerosol, so you can't uh, basically just be in the room with the person. It requires direct contact. It's usually transmitted with body fluids or direct contact with the patient. And if we handle all patients with, if you will, universal bodily fluid precautions, which we now do largely as a result of viruses like AIDS, uh, really Ebola should not present a major public health threat to our country. So uh, our previous experience with contagious viruses, actually viruses potentially more contagious than uh, Ebola or equally contagious, should help us as long as we actually do those procedures. So tightening up the already existing procedures is what's needed, not necessarily creating new procedures. Now remember the details around that original emergency room visit have not been made public, so we can only speculate. But I would say that the key issue there is making sure that the healthcare providers got the history that this individual had been in Africa uh, just a week before. Uh, clearly, the exact same patient with the exact same uh, symptoms would be handled very differently if you knew that they had arrived from a country endemic for Ebola versus virtually any other history. So the first issue is really it's very important that that previous travel history is known by the healthcare providers that are making decisions. Otherwise, exactly what happened will happen again. And the unfortunate aspect of that is that's two more days for which people might be exposed to the virus. Well, as with many things, the knowledge of what is true and not true, the knowledge of where to get information and find out and answer your questions are really what I would recommend to people. 
It's not that this is an insignificant health problem, but the problem is the concern and fear is often many orders of magnitude greater than it need be. And so with information usually becomes, uh, comes reassurance. Uh, generally speaking, there are only a handful of people who actually have any possibility of contracting Ebola from this case, and they are being closely monitored now. So I think there is little risk to anybody in the state of Texas, let alone in Dallas, even in the hospitals in question, that they will, quote, catch Ebola. It's just not that infectious. On the other hand, we need to be diligent about the cases of Ebola that we don't know are Ebola at the time, and that was the situation that was created with this patient when they first appeared in an emergency room. It's the unexpected case, the one that uh, originally presents that needs to be handled correctly. Those are the ones we should focus on. I think right now there's very little risk of any uh, public health uh, problem developing in Texas now that they know what they're dealing with.